What's happening, everyone? It's Angelo from Daily Vita Moves. You know, one of my intentions of making these videos is to help you learn about your body a little bit more. Um, so today we're going to go through a little anatomy lesson of our calf muscles. So when we get a little bit clearer picture of the things um, on the inside, how they look and how they work and function, um, one, we can better be able to move um, or improve the quality of our movement and two, um, we can really get a deeper appreciation of what this body is and how it works um, and therefore we'll have a greater tendency to take better care of it. So today we're going to talk about the calf muscles. Um, I'm going to bust out my anatomy book, show you what those muscles look like um, and things to keep in mind on how to keep them in good working proper order. So let's do this. Okay, so these are the muscles that we're going to be looking at today, um, known as our calf muscles. Um, there's two main muscles uh, calf muscles are comprised of, um, and that's the gastrox so that forms this kind of bulkier part of um, the calf, and then underneath that is your soleus. Um, so those two muscles um, layer on top of each other, well the gastroc on top of the soleus, and then connect here to make our Achilles tendon which attaches to our heel. Um, so the function of our calf muscles is to, one, when we're walking, okay, it helps to propel us forward, okay, and then in quicker movements, of course, helps us to sprint, um, or change direction, helps us to hop and jump, but also um, in running or in hopping and jumping, it helps to absorb um, the shock or so the momentum of us when we land, okay? So um, there's a concentric or contracting function to help propel us forward, and then there's also where it's um, contracted and then helping us to absorb shock so it's actually contracted and then lengthening to help us um, land softly from a jump. Okay so here we go this is one of my anatomy books um, actually one of my favorites it's by a publishing company called T-May um, you don't say yes I think that's pronounced T-May um, Atlas of Anatomy um, so here is what is technically called the triceps surae. So um, it's called triceps because the gastroc has two heads here, you can see there. And then underneath that, just pretend that was cut away, underneath that is the soleus here. Um, I should mention that um, there's actually what is maybe considered the fourth head, which is this plantaris muscle and so you can see it's a little uh, muscle here at the back of the knee and then the tendon is very long comes down this way and then joins into the Achilles so um, surprisingly enough um, some people don't have this little muscle so um, therefore they stick to triceps surrey three uh, three heads this is the back of the right leg okay so here's the heel and then this is sort of the arch of the, the foot here so this is the inside and this is the outside of the leg um, your hamstrings which is not pictured here actually come down and attach into here this is the medial epicondyle of the tibia and then you have another part of a uh, group of hamstrings coming down into the lateral um, part the head of the fibula so it actually forms um, I guess a good analogy is sort of like this, um, where they're sort of laid on top of each other and cross each other. Um, so that's an important part um, where I find in massage to sort of um, work to get these tissues to move relative to each other. And you want to take that same idea because what can happen here in the calf is that the gastroc and soleus, especially for people that are more sedentary, um, they will start to kind of stick together on top of each other. So if you can imagine my hands here, um, where they're sliding like this, well if they're more stuck 
and then now we try to contract relative to each other, it's very um, difficult. So that's going to decrease um, the function in terms of um, the power we'll be able to generate and the shock absorption we're able to take. Uh, because without that, um, there's going to be more stress on other areas, our feet, our knees, um, all the way to our hips or back. So uh, this is a very important area to um, kind of keep in good condition. Um, in a lot of anatomy books, anatomy books, um, what's not really shown is the fascia, the covering. So um, just imagine if you've seen a chicken breast and um, there's that little thin film, um, kind of plasticky film over the chicken breast. Um, that material, the fascia, actually surrounds every cell of our body and so um, sort of a continuous web uh, from head to toe and so that tissue actually surrounds this and weaves into other tendons and ligaments and joint capsules and um, are sort of lines of uh, fascial tension that play a part in how we're able to move. Um, so you want to think of that um, because it's not so cut and dry as it is um, depicted here in the anatomy books. Um, so this actually um, connective tissue also splays out over the heel and goes down to the bottom of the foot and into the bottom of our toes. Um, and so um, this fascia actually connects all the way to the hamstrings, to uh, the bottom of our pelvis, and then up into the back and into the shoulder. Okay, so what we want to take a look here really quick is m their muscles deeper to your soleus, our gastroc and soleus. So just imagine those muscles have been taken off. And now we have your flexor digitorum longus, which flexes um, the toes. You have your tibialis posterior, um, that's also he depicted here. Um, and if you run or ever had posterior shin splints, that's the muscle and tendon involved. And then your flexor halicis longus flexes the big toe. Um, so just so you get a look, that's what's happening underneath your calf muscles. Okay, so check this out. Um, it's kind of tiny, so I'll try to blow it up. Um, here, this is depicting an Achilles tendon rupture. Um, this is a common site where um, people tear their Achilles tendon. And so this is what I was talking about earlier, is when um, we have fascial restrictions, or let's just say things are stuck together and not moving as, as well as they could, um, it really distorts the forces and um, and in this case where the force is, that's generated through the muscle um, really tears the Achilles tendon and usually this is uh, a condition that has developed over a long period of time where um, there's just too much force being um, applied here at the Achilles tendon so it starts to get weakened um, and there's a number of reasons that can happen. Um, one, if you have tight calf muscles um, or tight fascia that's limiting the range of motion here, um, this is not going to get as much uh, lubrication and range of motion to keep pliable, right? So it can over time get a little bit more brittle um, and soft and then rupture um, when it, you hit the last straw. Alright, so there we go. Um, hopefully that picture um, and my explanation helps you, gives you a little bit more knowledge about your calf muscles, um, what they look like, um, and how they work and things to look out for. Um, below this video I'll post one or two videos, I'll search for them um, in my database, of movements that you can use to help keep your calf muscles in good proper working order. So enjoy this. Please share this with your friends and family. Teach them what you've learned here. And here's to making moves that nourish your life. We'll see you soon.